10 Ways the Narcissist Provokes You Online Before I dive into this content, just a reminder to subscribe to my channel and like this video. Ordinarily, I don't remind you of that fact at the beginning of each video because I prefer to get into the content, but it is appreciated if you do subscribe to ensure that you continue to have direct access to the world's best information about narcissism, and by liking the video, you increase its prominence to ensure that other people are able to access it also. Thank you for doing so. Talking of prominence, it's important that you, as a listener, share this information with other people who need it. I will continue to provide you with unrivaled content to help you understand and to achieve freedom. But as part of the provision of this free information, I ask of you to ensure that other people can access it. Post the links, share the videos, refer other people to it, and all of you will create a growing network of individuals that can access the world's best material and will ensure that they get the assistance that they need. I put a considerable amount of time of effort into the creation of content to ensure that you are helped. And I would ask that in return, you play your part by sharing this material far and wide. Thank you in advance of you doing so. Now, let's get down to business. As I tell you, 10 ways the narcissist provokes you online. Number one, posting pictures of the new intimate partner primary source online. This is a topic in itself. However, you ought to be aware that when you have recently escaped the narcissist and the narcissist has failed to draw you back in the narcissist will post pictures online of their new relationship with the intent of provoking you it is triangulation and amounts to an indirect assertion of control over you and it's important for you to recognize that that is a form of provocation of course if you are ensuring that you were involved in a total no contact regime you would not be entering the third arena of interaction and you would not be looking at the social media feed of your former partner or spouse if you don't look you won't know and therefore that's why it's important to do so because if you have managed to escape and perhaps you've moved on with somebody else the narcissist will in retaliation and in no specific circumstances and I will be expanding on this in a separate video but the narcissist will pro will post pictures of them with the new man or woman in order to provoke you. It's a passive hoover. The expectation is that you'll see it. The narcissist gains thought fuel from imagining you seeing this, getting worked up about it, that you will then respond in some way, possibly con contacting the narcissist, and that they can then dismiss you, put you down, and give you a malign hoover to assert superiority and control over you. Number two, posting adverse comments about you on social media. Whether it is on the narcissist's own feed, coming and populating your feed, or commenting on other people's pictures and posts, the narcissist does this as part of asserting control over you. In some instances, it is a direct assertion of control by hoovering you on your own social media and where the comments are being made on the narcissist's own social media or that of others then you're being triangulated the expectation is that you will be lurking looking or somebody you know will see it and then pass this information on to you the narcissist will gain thought fuel imagining your reaction to reading the particularly unpleasant comment but it is but it is more designed to ensure that you respond to the provocation by contacting the narcissist, thus giving fuel and allowing the narcissist an opportunity to assert control over you. You'll be smeared. And again, that is part of an indirect assertion of control for the purposes of provoking you to respond to the relevant provocation, thus providing the narcissist with fuel and asserting control over you. Three, liking and commenting on the pictures, posts of others. 
This is common during devaluation. Sometimes it happens during seduction where there are other prospects which are being cultivated alongside you and principally that is being done to assert control over the person that's being seduced and the, the direct intention isn't actually against you. If you happen to notice it, then the narcissist benefits because you've reacted to it in one form or another, usually causing you to try harder to get the attention of the narcissist and thus come under control. Where it's usually used in terms of a direct provocation is where you are being devalued and you find that the person that you're in a relationship with is liking some other man or woman's posts and commenting, looking great there, babe, you look fantastic, great picture, etc. And you're being triangulated with that individual and their social media. Again, the narcissist will get a little dollop of thought fuel, imagining your reaction, seeing it, but the expectation is, through this indirect assertion of control, is for you to react to it. And in the circumstances, your reaction provides fuel and allows the narcissist to know that you're being controlled. Number four, denying an active status. You will see on a particular app that we were online moments ago. And when we fail to reply to your message, you will then challenge us about the fact of why haven't you responded when I could see that you were active. And of course, when you're doing so, you are challenging the narcissist's sense of control and you will come up against the first line, the twin lines of the narcissistic defense, namely denial. Remember, because of compartmentalization, less from mid-range narcissists honestly believe that they weren't online. Strange as it may seem, but in their world, they were not. And therefore, they will deny that they were. And their narcissism causes them to believe that it's true. The greater and the ultra know that they're lying, but don't care. But this is again done as part of rejecting your assertion of control and provoking you to provide fuel. Number five, denying blocking you, alleging that your computer is faulty. This is done where you claim that the narcissist has blocked you and the narcissist again utilizes that first line of the twin lines of the narcissistic defense by saying, no, I haven't blocked you, and then some blame shifting, suggesting to you that it must be your computer that's faulty. There's a degree of plausibility about this, which varies, of course, in its effectiveness, but it's done to blame shift, to reject the threat to control that your question poses, and to provoke you into a response. Number six, having hundreds of online friends, usually of the opposite sex. This is another form of triangulation. You'll have seen it. The narcissist is friends with 850 people, many of whom are scattered all around the world and, oddly enough, are of the opposite sex and all seem to be drop-dead gorgeous. The narcissist doesn't know these people and has collected them because we like to collect people in the way that we collect objects. You are, of course, objects to us. And these individuals are obtained because there may be interaction with them, gaining some small amounts of weak online fuel. But this cohort of tertiary sources provides a valuable role with regard to triangulating you. Who are all of these people, you'll ask? Oh, they're just friends. Why do you have to have so many of them? Why are they all beautiful women? Why are they all handsome men? To, to remind you that you're not the only person on the docket, that you might be replaced. It is to assert control over you indirectly through triangulation and then to cause you to respond to this triangulation by querying about it. Yes, your query challenges our control, but then it enables us to issue a put-down. You've given us fuel, which is what we want, and then we assert control by denying there's anything to worry about or saying, oh, you're the only one for me, don't worry about all of them, they don't compare to you, which is a benign triangulation. But it's all about controlling you through this provocation and gaining fuel. Number seven, having no notifications on our lock screen. You, on your phone, have it so that when text messages and WhatsApp 
messages arrive, when somebody snaps you, it comes up on your lock screen so you know that to open your phone and see what this person has written. By contrast, our lock screen is, is suspiciously quiet. We spend a lot of time on our phones, of course. The phone is the operations HQ of the narcissist. See the video of the same name. Yet, the fact that there are no notifications coming up on our screen is because we don't want you to see who we are in contact with. But that in itself is a provocation because you will notice that our phone is suspiciously quiet. Even though we spend a lot of time on it, nothing ever seems to come up on the lock screen. And that's because it is being done as a form of provocation. And you're being triangulated with an object, our phone. Number eight. Our device automatically connects at a location that we say we've never been to before. We, of course, have been there, and it is something nefarious, and we've been up to some skullduggery. And, of course, you will query, how come, since this is the first time we've apparently been to this house or to this particular hotel, that your phone is automatically connected? Well, it's obviously because we've been there before. We will, of course, deny that and give a shrug, claiming not to know how that has happened. But, again, you're being triangulated with the phone and with the circumstances in order to draw fuel from you and assert control over you. Number nine, cryptic timeline posts. These are passive hoovers, and the narcissist will post something which is a seemingly strange reference to an event or an occurrence, or how they're feeling, but you are able to understand because it's directed at you. And whilst this is not a direct hoover, it's an indirect passive hoover, the expectation is that you will notice it and that you'll respond in some way, so you'll say, why are you writing that about me? And of course, because it's cryptic, it enables us to utilize plausible deniability and say, you're reading too much into it. It's got nothing to do with you. You shouldn't be interested in this. Oh, no, that's not about you. So, first of all, when the narcissist posts it, thought fuel is obtained about imagining your reaction. The desired effect is for you to get in touch and point out why you're writing this about me. I know what you're trying to say about me there. We, of course, gain fuel from your reaction, which is what we want. We then kill your challenge to our control by issuing a denial through plausible deniability, and therefore we've asserted control over you. Job done. And finally, number 10. And of course, there are lots of different online provocations. I've just selected 10 of the common ones. The empowerment memes. Between you and I, listeners, I fucking hate these. The, you've seen this dross. Uh, people put some inspirational picture. It's a rainbow or a, a, somebody stood silhouetted against the sun with their arms up in the air, punching freedom, etc. And there'll be some semi-mystical quotation about um, only the genuine people know who I am or... Surround yourself with people who are only going to lift you higher. Or, my goal is not to be better than anyone else, but to be better than I used to be. Or, don't cry because it's over, smile because it happened. And, stars can't shine without darkness. Give it a fucking rest. These are done and posted by the narcissist on a repeated basis. You will see them clogging up the timeline on their social media again. You shouldn't be breaching your no contact to look at the narcissist's social media. If you don't look, you won't know. However, when this is done, yes, it's a provocation. Because, first of all, it's being done to try and engender reactions from anybody that sees it. Invariably pity and sympathy. Absolutely sickening. But also, again... Because it's being talked about you. And often this will happen, for instance, if you have escaped the narcissist or you've threatened the narcissist control in a particular way, which is pretty serious, uh, falling short of escape, so that the narcissist, and typically these are your mid-range narcissists, those mealy-mouthed, shriveled, worn-up, bald, passive-aggressive cowards, those individuals will post this shit in order to land a passive-aggressive blow in your direction 
It's being done to gain thought fuel, it's being done to provoke a reaction from you, which thereby will provide fuel, and again, it will be denied that it's actually directed at you, and the narcissist will fall back into, I'm just expressing how I feel, am I not allowed to talk about my feelings, and other such crap as that. And there you have it. Ten ways that the narcissist provokes you online. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.